Why have a fake carbon roof when you can have a real one? As many of you know, the GI Yaris comes with this vinyl wrap carbon effect and underneath it's a real forged roof. As you can see from where I've removed the seals. So what I'm gonna do is remove the rest of the vinyl wrap, polish, sand if necessary, and then apply PPF over the top. As you can see, I've already removed the aerial, which is a very tricky job. I've had to pop the linings, this panel and a bit of this panel out in the boot on both sides and that has given me access to the headlining which is secured with three clips one two and three and then you can reach in and feel the bolt there's one connector that needs to be popped off as well and one 10 mil bolt and then the aerial simply pops off make sure you take the gasket with it and there's nothing left on the car and now we're ready to remove the other side seal the rear seal and peel off the vinyl there we go oh no there we go oh no there we go oh no <laughs> the rear seal has three plastic grommety bits that pop off each side and then the center one is not a pull-up clip it's a slide so you slide it towards the rear of the car and you're all done Here we go. This is pretty cool. Don't know how well that's coming out on the camera, but that looks epic. So that is our teaser of the forged carbon. It looks okay finish-wise at the moment. So hopefully this will be very satisfying if it comes off in one big sheet, but probably be lots of smaller ones. And then I'm gonna tidy up, of course, and clean all around here and then we'll have to assess how much polishing etc we will need how cool does this look so far this looks awesome and the finish isn't actually too bad it will definitely need a bit of cutting and polishing but there's no real big defects yet i should add fingers crossed but for now it looks pretty good that is a much better finish before after. good does this 50 50 look i'm so excited to get it polished and the ppf on obviously still got the other half to remove but the finish looks pretty good for now so it shouldn't require too much work but again we might run into problems later so let's see all of the wrap is now off there's still little spots of adhesive everywhere but this is all going to be thoroughly cleaned even more before i start polishing all the seals around the back and the side are off and the front i can't remove the seal but I would if I could, so I'm just gonna have to tuck the PPF under there. So now it's just a case of keep cleaning and then tomorrow I'll have a day of polishing and PPFing. It is day two as I started yesterday evening. Everything is now pretty much clean. There's still a few small bits of adhesive, but it's now time to start the polishing stage. So I'm using just a compound, so no wax or you know resin finish because I want to stick directly on top with the PPF so hopefully that will get rid of the last of the glue and then I'll go and make this as smooth and shiny as it can be to prep for the PPF later on. Now for that I've got a huge sheet which is going to overspill and I'm going to stick it all down and then once it's down go around the edges with a blade and stick to where I want it to finish. Obviously I want to go under the seal at the front around all the edges as well to make sure it doesn't lift over the next few years. So time to get the polishing stuff ready. I'm going to be using this, the Meguiar's dual action polisher. I'm gonna start with the five inch disc to just try and remove some of that glue, anything that's remaining, flat the surface and see if it's effective. If not, and most likely, afterwards I'll move to a three inch cutting disc and I've got various different Menzerna compounds to see how hard I'm going to need to cut. I'm going to start with the, oh, I'm going to start with the 2-2, I think, so a medium cut polish on the 5-inch disc, 
and see how that performs. And then I might need to go slightly heavier on the cutting till we work up to our polished finish. Just putting my polishing top on. So when I get a nice line of polish at my stomach, I don't ruin all of my clothes. There's our test patch. Now I'm just gonna wipe that down and see how it goes because you can always go at it again, but you can't add a roof. So I can already see that that is a much blacker black and smooth, feels smoother to the touch. So I'm gonna keep going on this area as a test and then I'll show you afterwards what the comparison is like. And I'm gonna work along this front edge, so I'm just gonna tape up where I don't wanna get polish, i.e. windscreen. Okay, this is working pretty well, but I'm actually gonna to move to a much more aggressive heavy cut compound and a three inch disc and just see if that really livens it up. It's removing the surface scratches, but I wanna get a bit deeper into those wavy bits. So I'm gonna switch over the disc now and change compound. Now, I don't know if you can see here, I have sanded and polished this portion, this sort of square, and in all honesty, it has made very little difference to the portion at the front which I just polished but the portion at the rear where I sanded with 2000 and then polished took me ages so what I've decided to do is I've got a very thick PPF that should mask the waviness and I can't really improve upon the waviness that much so I'm just going to polish the whole car with this 400 sort of grit 400 cuts compound and then I'm going to work my way up the polishes and then call it a day at that before the PPF because really it's got the same outcome using just the polish as it did with the wet sand and then polish so I think it's still gonna look good we've lucked out with this roof it's got no real pitting it's just a bit wavy so I think we've lucked out massively so on to the full polish now <music> I finished all the polishing, it looks amazing. So now it's just remove any last bits of glue, make sure all the edges are clean, and then it'll be clean around as well. So not just the area where the PPF is going, but around it in case I slide the film, etc. And then it'll be wet down the whole car, wet down the area around me. I'm outside, which isn't obviously ideal because there's dust and dirt floating around. But if I try and wet everything around me down, then it should keep things stuck where they are and then we'll peel off the film stick it down position it roughly but of course then afterwards i'm cutting it with a blade folding down the edges boom make it sound easy it's probably going to be very difficult but we'll see but for now buff off remove the glue clean continue whip out the ppf spray it all over with Johnson's baby shampoo and water mix, which will be our slip solution. And then for the edges, I've prepared a tack solution. Got these two bottles here. So one is 20% alcohol, which is my tack solution. And the slip solution is about three milliliters of Johnson's baby shampoo to one liter of water. So we're gonna make sure the PPF is nice and wet. And then I've got my squeegee, squeegee it dry and yeah, I'm gonna be roping in my dad for assistance on this one as well because it's a huge sheet of PPF, but I think we'll be good. Okay, it's all clean. So we've washed hands, ready to get covered in slip solution. The roll is just over here. Here it is, this is the roll. So it is plenty big enough, fingers crossed, when I ordered it, to cover the whole thing. So then we'll lay it on and I'll make sure I've got blades ready. I've got cloths in my pocket, ready to wipe, get my squeegee out. So this is Expel ultimate plus ppf so it's nice and thick to help mask any waviness as we peel back we've got to make sure we keep this uber wet so now we've got about four inches behind we're going to tack down onto the boot lid so i'm going to try and keep pulling as i spray okay that is now in a good enough position to think about start squeegeeing from the middle because we've got these sort of helmet bulges each side we're going to start in the middle so i have the squeegee in my pocket make sure this is wet so it doesn't grip wets my squeegee as well 
everything needs to be soaked in slip solution and then I'm going to start right in the center with some gentle strokes because I don't want to push it down hard yet I want to just start a seam down the middle and the advantage of wetting the top and the bottom is you get to see live as you're squeegeeing how effective you're being so this is going okay so far really don't want to speak too soon I'm going to stay away from the edges for now because I can always work towards an edge but the centre I can't sort of redo so so here there are these little lips for the helmets or they're effectively helmet bulges so I'm going to keep going vertically sort of down the car until I get to them and I need to push up like so now I'm noticing it getting a bit too grippy under squeegees and I don't want to risk a stretch when it grips so here we go that's the satisfying one. Oh, oh! can you see that bubble? Wait for it, wait for it. Oh! So I'll come around the other side to do the same thing. And before I work on these high channels, I'm going to go harder in the middle to make sure that's properly stuck down. Because it's nice and wet under there, we can reposition the film a couple of times. Now, when you're doing PPF, it's very easy to just follow the motions drag the squeegee back and forth etc but what I need to remind myself to do is actually observe what's going on and check there are no bubbles appearing because it's easy like I say to just think ah I've gone over it we're done but you're not it's not that easy so some things will lift up that you did previously but that's fine because it means they weren't stuck down properly before so it's like a little check for you a little test so now I'm working wetting the outside again not to tug the film getting it roughly as nice as I can get it on the car and then I'm working outwards again with a I'd say medium pressure again it's kind of hard to define what pressure you call medium and I call medium but that's fine I call it medium so tough I've done sort of half of this area and I'm going over it with a hard pressure now now I am not a PPF professional but I just know what works for me and I've applied a few pieces of PPF in my time a lot to bikes actually which is trickier than you'd expect one ridge here and then there's a main surface then there's a, another ridge so I'm just going to do that main surface again and the reason why I stop at the ridges is because they often cause twisting and fingering and bubbling in the film. So it's a good point to readjust if anything's changed. So I'm just about to get my very sharp single edge razor blade and cut along the front. So what I'm using along the front edge is the squeegee at the top, as you can see, and a plastic bike lever, which was a fantastic idea from my dad. They are rare. I'm using that to pry the seal outwards and that lets me get my squeegee in to secure the PPF, which is working really nicely for now. I'm leading with the tire lever and following with the squeegee. The edges have actually taken so long I didn't have enough space on my SD card to film it all, but in short it's a case of removing material slowly until you have basically everything in contact because you're better off having say a visible edge that's completely in contact than having any sort of air bubble or lip because at the edge that's a trap for dirt and it means your PPF will not last as long so right now I'm just sort of I've cut a V out of the corner and I'm just slowly working my way outwards until the V just has no air bubbles in so I have an incredibly sharp razor blade to do it you probably won't be able to do this with anything that isn't super, super sharp. Feast your eyes on this. Doesn't this look just amazing? So this is all PPF now. It's not particularly clean because the ceramic coating will be going on in a bit. And as you can see, it's now nighttime and I'm working with a spotlight 
And what I'm going to do, which I think is hopefully going to be a good tip for you if you do choose to do it, but we'll see, I'll tell you afterwards, is these edges, there are moulding marks. You can see there's little lines and it means that the PPF doesn't seal perfectly at the bottom. So what I'm going to be doing is putting a thin line of black silicon in the corner there to seal it down. And then after that, it'll be seal stuck back on and roof ceramic. So yeah, working into the night on this one. So the bead looks pretty good. I'm pleased with it. It's definitely sealed in that edge. So that will make the PPF last much longer without peeling up. And then tomorrow, after it's had lots of time to cure, I'll go and stick the beads back on with some 3M double-sided tape and a clip at the front. So everything really is watertight, every single edge. So all that's left is ceramic coating and then replace the aerial. So yeah, I want to ceramic coat everything before the aerial goes on so that every, absolutely everything is protected. The X-Bell has UV protection or it says it's UV resistant, but I'm going to put a ceramic coating on top that is definitely UV resistant. So hopefully that should bond and provide us with the security for the resin. I'm going to be using this G Technique C1 Crystal Lacquer for the ceramic coating. So this forms a really strong chemical bond. So all about the UV protection, which is the main reason why Toyota put the vinyl on on factory was to protect it from UV. So put this on now and then, like I say, aerial and rebuild the back of the car with the trim. So here is the aerial and this is the bolt and clip. It only goes on one way like so. And then you feel, or I felt, but if you removed more of this lining, you'd be able to see it, the electronic sort of clip that goes in there. You have to push in a lever for it to click in and then you know it's in and you screw this into place. When removing it, I did the clip first, the electric clip and then the bolt. So now I'm gonna do bolt and then clip hopefully, but I'm gonna to have to feel my way around. So gaskets still there, seal is around the outside. Offer this up on top, there we go. I'm going to reach in, and this isn't really a visual feast. That click, if you heard it, is the clip. I'm going to use, I've got this lovely little snap-on socket. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. So I'm going to put the bolt in there, and then the clip points backwards is the way I think of it. So I'm now going to get all of this kit in there, however I can, and then feel my way to victory. Oh, he's only gone and done it. So I'm just ratcheting it up. A ratchet is absolutely essential here, whether it's a spanner or a wrench. In terms of how tight I did it, I was just on the lower close part of the wrench and just nipped it up. You can feel it's a foam gasket and a rubber seal around the outside. So as long as it's compressed a bit, it should be fine. There's no need to wrench the hell out of it. So now if you look in the back, what we have to address is this monstrosity where it looks like my car's falling apart. So all of these are just fixed with little clips. If you can see in there, they are purple. And the further in you get, there's one, there's two. Further in you get, you'll see more, but I can't really show them on camera. But at the end of the day, it's a jigsaw puzzle and you've got to be a bit overconfident and press much harder than you'd like to put it this way, I was using a lot of strength pulling these things off and it's not a fun feeling, but it works. It's the way it's meant to be. So don't be fearful, but I'm not responsible if you do snap the panel. So don't want to hear it. It looks amazing, really incredible. I'll show you some proper shots in daylight when everything's put together. And there is the aerial back in place. And the rear of the car is, you can see, fully assembled. Now I wanted to show you what the roof looks like in the daylight and it is amazing. It looks like it's glowing, it looks super shiny, slick, all of the waviness is gone. The nice thing about the shiny finish is you get to see those helmet bulges in the roof, a bit more detail. Whereas before that thick matte vinyl didn't show any detail, it held dirt, it got scratched, it yeah, it was not a good look and it looked all around very cheap. Whereas this looks proper premium, it's very hydrophobic. And with the PPF and the polishing I did, it's got a really deep, dark look to it. Now the car looks amazing. Watch this video to see how I made it drive amazingly with extra power. And as always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.